Hank here with some Q&A questions about the Shure MVX to you. Is the headphone output noisy? Once you get past like 85% on your volume, 85 to 100% seems noisy. Right now I'm on low impedance headphones and I do hear a lot of a hiss in them once I get past 85%. The next question, can you drive? high impedance headphones. And for that, I had to place an order. I took some recommendations from a couple of friends, both great recommendations, but I settled on the Koss Pro 4 AA headphones. These are supposed to be really good high impedance headphones. And on the Rodecaster Duel, sound great. On this device, not so great. They are hard to push on here. I'm at 100% maxed out. I could listen to a YouTube video comfortably at 95, and, but I can listen to it at 100 and tolerate it, but comfortably at 95%. Uh, music, easily I could go to 100. But overall, it doesn't sound that good on these high impedance. They're 250 ohm high impedance headphones, and they do not sound good on this device especially once you start ramping up past 70 before this video i was listening to a road youtube video and about 70 sounded good 75 okay but it's quiet and then once i started getting into the 80s and definitely into the 90s the audio sounded really really bad so for just monitoring what you're doing could you do it? Yes, but with these cost headphones, it just doesn't sound that great to me. I plugged them into the Rodecaster Duo, and they sounded fantastic listening to stuff, and it was able to drive it to where it would blow my hearing uh, if I kept going. So can it drive high impedance headphones? Yes. Would I recommend it? Probably not for anything other than just light casual use. Next is the mic preamp noisy and this one's a hard one i will put my results up on the screen because with the headphones sounding so staticky i can't tell where that's coming from it reminds me of the zoom uac 232 where the headphone output had so much static in it that i thought that was going into the recordings but it wasn't even going into the recordings that's what this reminds me of there's so much noise in the headphones once you get past on low impedance headphones once you get past like 75, 80-ish. There's so much noise in there that you can't tell where it's coming from. So when I edit this video, I will throw it into Audition and do some measurements on the noise floor. But you got to keep in mind, too, that that's going to be the room environment included in that, which I usually get some good results from the Roadcaster Duo in the neighborhood of negative 75, negative 77 dB overall background noise. So those results are on the screen now. Can you plug the MVX to you into a game system USB port? The answer to that is no. Those game systems use USB class audio one and the, the MVX to you is a USB audio class two device. Can you use the MVX to you with an iPad or an iPhone? So this is one of those situations where I should have took a screenshot and I didn't. And I'm kicking myself for doing it because yesterday, August 21st, 2023, there was a notation that said, we don't recommend it, but yes, you can do it. But you're supposed to change all the settings on a desktop or laptop and then connect it. And they even told you how to connect it. Now, today, August 22nd, 2023, they've changed that. And now it says, officially, the MVX2U is designed for use with laptops and desktop computers. We do not recommend connecting an XLR microphone to iPad. And this also goes for uh, Android and iPhone. They have the exact same wording for all of them now. Because I don't think they want that feedback from people when it doesn't work for certain people and it works for other people. I don't blame them on that because you got to kind of watch yourself on that stuff. So officially, they only recommend using it with a laptop or a desktop. Have you noticed any heating issues? I've been trying to get this thing to overheat ever since I got it, and I've been unable to do so. I've gotten it warm twice, and then mysteriously, several minutes later, it was back to being almost cold. 
it has some way of dissipating heat. How does it sound with a condenser mic? Well, let's check that out. Now I'm on the neat Worker B2, and here's how it sounds. By dropping the gain down, it's down to 34 with the Sure SM7B, it was at 60. Now it's down to 34 with this condenser microphone. I'm hitting a really good level. I hear none of the hiss and such that I was hearing when it was cranked to 60. I can hear traffic driving. I can hear the computer just a little bit going and stuff like that, but it sounds really quiet to me. Now I could be wrong on the playback. I might listen back and go, oh my goodness, that's awful. But I'm just telling you what I hear. These are the, the low impedance headphones and I should hear something if there's something really, really bad going on. But I think dropping that gain so much has really, really helped it. I like the Neat Worker B2 anyway. Love the look. So we'll see how it is in the edit. In my opinion, condensers seem to work really, really well with this device. Yeah, I don't even, in OBS, I don't even see the meter registering until I start talking, unless a car goes by and such. I hope those answers are helpful for those of you who are searching for those solutions or having those questions. If there are any other questions you need answered without me having to break out my Amazon card or anything, please let me know and I will try to answer those for you or put out another video or what have you. But right now I'm really liking this device and with it being so easy to mount onto microphones directly onto them, especially because I have the added reach of my Gator Frameworks quick release. So it gives me even more. Even if I didn't have that, I'd just raise the bar up just a, a little higher and bring the mic up closer. But chime in in the comments. How do you think it's doing? Subscribe to my free podcast gear and software newsletter. Link in the description. Channel members get the video version every month. Thank you.